Welcome back, family. We're back at it again with a Ashley's Adventures reaction. And we're going to do What Did Elvis Leave All Over Graceland? Secret Graceland. And once again, Ashley's Adventures link will be in my description. Subscribe to her channel. Notification bells on. You get all her awesome content. If you're new around here, subscribe to my channel. With notification bells on, you get all the videos. Let's get right into it. Ashley's Adventures, Adventures Through Time. Oh yeah. Hi guys, Hello. And welcome back to another installment of Secret Graceland, where we will explore all corners of our favorite historic home. Let's dive in. Let's get this it. first one is kind of gross, but true. In 2003, Lisa Marie Presley gave an interview with Rolling Stone magazine. In it, her daughter let slip that when Lisa was a kid, Cruising around the Graceland grounds in her very own golf cart, she would sometimes run over frogs. <laughs> so going into the house, I want to share Ribbit. a fun fact with you. Ribbit. Elvis was known for his signature sunglasses, but did you know he wore reading glasses? Hmm. In fact, he would leave multiple pairs of reading glasses all around Graceland for whenever he needed them, according to his friend Charlie Hodge. I have chapsticks all over my house. And so, hold on, he... he pairs of reading glasses, he used reading glasses all around Graceland for whenever he needed them, according to his friend Charlie Hodge. Okay. I have chapsticks all over my house, and Elvis had reading glasses. This is it, it's not, you should say, is I had chapsticks all over my house, yo, me too. These lips be dry as hell, but well, I do too, all over, and then I lose them every day, so that's why they're everywhere. <laughs> Neo style brand was left in Charlie's room in the basement. Ooh, look at those stunning glasses. I recently just noticed at Graceland. These giant vents in the ceiling, especially in the front part of the house. Looking back through old photos from the 70s, these weren't there. Possibly added for the building to become a museum in 1982, these large vents can be seen in the foyer, living room, and the dining room. Okay, a couple months ago, I created a video about a newly surfaced photo of the dining room from 1963, shared by Fred Hoover. Yo, what's that chandelier? This is the photo. Is that leaves? up there like hanging off of it pretty nice elegant here so if you haven't seen that video and you're interested in a deep dive into the dining room it will either be linked below or you can click the link that pops out at the top here so in that video i talk about the sunburst clock that's over the fireplace in the living room and discuss whether it's in fact the same one that oh, george yeah. klein gave elvis that's the one that's there today or put there by the interior designer in 1957 well, a lady named Jessica on Facebook brought this to my attention and it solved the mystery. If you've toured Graceland in the last few years, you will have seen a oh, like a sun, the clock, of Graceland like the rays created by the design team when Elvis first moved in. Pretty cool. These are framed and line the walls in the Hall of Gold in the trophy building. One of them is a living room with furniture and decor that we recognize today. Here is my picture of that rendering. I totally forgot about these, but it solves everything. This is the designer's vision for the living room. In this view, the foyer is to the left and the music room is on the right. In the middle above the fireplace is the framed clock that the interior designer added to this space in 1957, which is the same one spotted in the 1963 photo of the living room. The one that we see on the tour today oh, nice, is the nice. one there that GK gave That's beautiful, look at that. Christmas sometime after 1963. Shoes off, you know that. Shoes in off March in that room. In 1965, Elvis did a photo shoot for the commercial appeal, which took place in both the music room and the living room. In one of my favorite photos of Elvis at Graceland, he is relaxed on the 15-foot couch, foot on the coffee table, strumming his early 60s Olympic white Fender Precision bass. There's a lot to take in from this crystal clear photo, but today we're only focusing on the bass. According to friend Jerry Schilling, Elvis enjoyed playing the bass. This very one can be seen in the 1966 movie Spin Out, although Elvis isn't playing it. It's either slung over his shoulder or resting in a stand. And it might have even made an appearance in his LA home when the Beatles came over later this same year. How much that guitar is worth right now? What do you think, guys? How much is that guitar worth? <laughs> I don't know, I'd probably say 10 grand. Probably a little bit more. Year 1965. Yeah, we got the little purple pants on. I like that. Archive and has been or lavender, or whatever you want to call years, it. Even having its own photo shoot in the same spot as a 1965 photo, only this time it was by itself. 
<laughs> Let's go down the hall and look at something cool I found on eBay. This picture of Minnie Mae's bedroom is small and very blurry, but it gives lots of clues. The downstairs bedroom that we see today looks so much like it did in the late 1950s when Gladys and Vernon lived in it. But in the meantime, when the room belonged to Dodger, it looked very different. Let's get a closer look. So in this view, the photographer is standing across from where we stand at the ropes, facing the doorway. We can see four people here. On the left, it could be Minnie Mae's daughter Gladys or Nash. Grandma is seated in the middle. Aunt Delta in a floral dress. Aunt and Delta. standing in the doorway to the bathroom. Grandma moved downstairs in the late 60s. Oh yeah, you can tell right here. The previous bedroom upstairs became Lisa Marie's nursery. Good eyes, Ashley. Grandma had floral wallpaper, a blue bedspread, and what looks to be blue carpet, and different furniture than what we see on the tour today. This was likely how Elvis last saw this bedroom. I don't know, but is that a nurse or something? It's like somebody dressed in white. It's like a nurse. Like, let me know if um his grandmother had a nurse that came to the house. Or it could be the cook, the black lady who did this peanut butter and whatever, banana sandwiches or something like that. It could be her. <laughs> bedroom. Has grandma had it? A clearer look, but not as broad of a shot, is this one, originally shared in Priscilla's book, Elvis and Me. Grandma is sitting in her chair in the same spot as that other photo, Aunt Delta standing behind, and Lisa Marie sitting next to her. Wow, you got very, very close resemblance to his grandmother. Wow. The chin, the jaw. Look at Lisa Marie. <laughs> her great-grandma. We can get a better look at the type of chair that was in this room at the time, as well as the floral wallpaper added when it was Minnie Mae's Nice accent chair. As well as the front of her bedroom door covered in red shag carpet squares. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a quick break, but when we come back, a quick stop in the kitchen before taking a closer look at something that might have been disguised and hidden in plain sight. Ubrelvi helps you, you know, fight migraine. You gotta pay her you bills, guys. One dose of Ubrelvi quickly... Welcome back. There Be are back. a few items on display in Graceland's kitchen that I think are worth a closer look. These three canisters, small, medium, and large, are on the counter next to the stove, decorated with vegetables, fish, and lobsters. They are no doubt long empty, but it's interesting to see the type of items that Elvis saw in his kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay, the possible item in disguise. Let's take our tour down the stairs to the basement and turn left into the TCB den. In a previous Secret Graceland video, ironically titled Hidden in Plain Sight, I talked about a couple of chairs located in this room. If you want to watch that one, here is the link up here, or it will be included in the description box as well. These chairs with this retro zigzag pattern oh, nice. were in the basement in the 1960s and were recently being I actually sold like those chairs. The, the patterns are dope. And have since sold. Viewer Joe contacted me with a very interesting theory that I want to share with you guys with her permission. So let's take a closer look at these recliners. The overall shape as well as the buttons on the back of the seat. There's a pattern. Three in the top row, four in the next, three again, four again, and then three for a total of 17 buttons. Do you think this chair looks like the two chairs in the upstairs living room? Here's a photo from 1963 taken in the dining room, but in the background, we can see the original white chairs with a really similar shape to the chevron pattern chairs that ended up downstairs. The best look I've ever found of one of the white living room chairs is this one from that 1965 photo shoot that Elvis did. There's that same pattern of buttons. Less in the top row, more in the next row, less in the next row, and so on. So maybe Elvis had white chairs for the living room mm. and then funky pattern chairs for the basement. But the chairs that we see in the living room today are not the original chairs. Oh yeah, they're different. These were added to the house for tours to resemble the white chairs that Elvis had in here in the early days. If the white chairs don't exist anymore, it's possible that they were reupholstered and put downstairs in the basement. Or were they in Good the basement since 1957? Here mm. is the interior designer's rendering of the den, the room that would later have the lightning bolt. In it All are the chairs. chairs that have a different shape, but are recliners and definitely have a funky zigzag pattern. We got two ottomans too, it's though. It's possible that they bought two formal ones upstairs and had two fun casual ones for this space. Yeah, that's what I think. And that is it. What was your favorite part? Let me know in the comments below. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram for rare photos. And Honestly, I like those zigzag chairs. I want a pair. I want those. I want those chairs myself. Below. As always, thank you so the much. The brown for one, those are nice. Please subscribe for more adventures.
Guys, you never dis Ashley never disappoints, guys. You know that. You learn so much from her. I have so far. You know, and I want to thank Sammy for introducing me to her. Appreciate you. Remember, her link will be in my description, guys. Subscribe to her channel. Leave a like. Notification bells on so you get all her videos. Amazing videos. If you're new around here, subscribe to my channel. Leave a like. Notification bells on so you get all my videos. And I'll see you next time. Peace.